Hey there, I'm Daisy Whitney reporting for BTV at the NAB show. I've got a great series of interviews with executives who've been speaking throughout the day, including this first one with Mark Ganim at Wired Set slash Trender. His company is doing a lot of interesting analysis and research in terms of how media companies can benefit from understanding social conversations and what people are talking about on Twitter. So Mark, tell us about Wired Set and Trender and what you guys do exactly. Sure. Uh, we started about five years ago as a digital agency. I had left uh, Sony and Sony Music where I was working for a long time and saw a great opportunity in the social web. I, I break the web down into phases. There was destination web and then as it got to be more social and participatory, the social web was so exciting we decided to start a company called Wired Set that does marketing and based on our marketing we ended up starting to see the need for analytics for our clients. So we focused on social and digital media marketing and because of a client need we developed a product called Trender and Trender allows us to measure and have accountability for what we're doing across the social and digital web. So tell us about some of the clients that you have and how they're using Trender specifically. So we're really fortunate to have a great client base and we work uh, with a lot of broadcast and cable television networks, um, everyone from Oxygen to MTV to Comedy Central and a bunch of other great networks as well as a lot of publishers, HarperCollins and book companies and some um, web services. So we were fortunate to work with Last.fm when they started and a bunch of other web services that uh, were looking for adoption and we use Trender to measure the ROI, if you will, or the key performance indicators around what we do for them. So, uh, for example, if we're working with a television network like Oxygen, we worked with a project called Bad Girls Club, one of their shows, a serial show on their network, and it was particularly ripe for this conversation or the social web because everyone was talking about it. So we're able to not only do the outreach and the marketing around that and coordinate with Oxygen, who is very much active in this space, but at the same time measure that and see how it's working so we can call audibles. I really much have moved real time, so you can do a lot of stuff in advance of an airing of a show, but during the show is when the real heat is happening, and that's when you want to do everything from activation and pushing in new programs, and if you're not measuring and listening and responding during that time, you're not really equipped to have those conversations. So give us some examples of the type of things that you're able to measure with Trend, or are you measuring the number of tweets per hour? Are you measuring the number of YouTube videos, comments on them? What's the scope? So it started out as a broad tool across all social platforms, right? And it was just initially measuring. And now over the last two years, we've developed it into being not only measuring, but going real time and being able to look at more important data, like who is most influential speaking, where are they speaking from, like location, um, exactly what they're saying and how, how that relates to what's going online. So most past links around a particular subject or uh, going back to the influencer, who they are, where they're coming from, and focusing on how I can speak directly to them because you really are you know, looking at a pyramid and if you can affect the top of that pyramid, the more quickly you can affect the larger masses. Any data points you can share from Oxygen or MTV? Um, well, they're all using it very effectively in different ways. I'll speak briefly only because I started talking to you about Oxygen, but they've been very, very um, focused on uh, doing a case study around their work here. So because of that, they did a little test and control. And one of the things that was really interesting is that when they were doing live marketing on the East Coast, they saw a great effect, right? But they didn't do it on the West Coast. And when they initiated it on the West Coast, not only did it increase, I think it was like a 47% increase in the female demographic for that uh, network and that show, but uh, it sustained. So, you know, it was a good example of where you could say, okay, we're not doing anything, and where's the water level? And then, okay, now we've activated a program specific to that DMA, and we've seen it increase significantly. There's a case study up on their site as well as on media.twitter.com that breaks out the exact percentages, but hugely successful. And, you know, one of the first, I think, lines in the sand or case studies in this particular area to work from. 
And what do you mean by live marketing exactly? Like what, what are some of the specific tactics? So uh, I look at this as like an arc like this. And if you draw it right in the middle of the arc, the air of the show, that would be the hour, if you will. So you can do all sorts of placement that generates awareness, you know, video clips on Yahoo's television site, et cetera, right? But then when the show airs, that's when the live marketing starts. So you want to be listening, and we have a live dashboard to be able to listen and be able to see, A, the influencers, where they're coming from, how quick it's starting to trend. So I'm stick, sticking right now with Twitter data. And then this is where you can start to, when you're listening, and saying, oh, they're asking where the cast, did they have Twitter accounts? And then I can respond to all those people and continue to grow that conversation in ways, as well as this is the time when you want to activate other things. Say you have an iPhone app. Time to go fishing is when 50, 75,000 people are talking about your show at that time. I think they had three quarters of a million tweets around that particular season, around that show, which is a significant amount of chatter. And I would say earned media, if you will. And and once you're trending and worldwide trending, that's a great branding opportunity. Like everybody wants to know what is that, why is that, so on and so forth. The other thing about um, social networks is the majority of the people in your social graph are your friends. And if your friends are talking about something, it has more weight than, say, an ignoring a banner advertisement or something along those lines. So because it is uh, the influencer are your friends, you're more curious to understand what they're talking about. So that leads to further exploration and I don't know if it's changed the face of appointment-based television. I mean, I look at TV, you know, must-see Thursdays was like appointment-based TV back in the day, and now that's kind of like gone away because it's like where you are, when you are, when you want it, DVRs, on-demand, BitTorrent. And now there's a reason to like participate again with appointment-based television because the conversation is taking place around that, and it kind of activates that a little stronger. Thank you, Mark. Sure. Pleasure.